So today is the position of competition secretary, weigh in, and then the referee. And I would like to share my screen with you to get into the first PowerPoint presentation of this seminar. Are you all able to see? Yes. Yes, you're all right. Okay. Okay. Now, the way in team should consist of two technical officials or and two volunteers, you know, preferable from the organizing committee with IWF and master's weightlifting technical rule knowledge. Very important that everybody knows the technical rules. The competition secretary should be one of the way in team official. Now in Rovaniemi, we have Corinne Grotenhaus from the USA who has decided to be at every way in, even if it is with two competition platforms, that means at two way ins at the same time to survey, you know, to survey that everything goes according to plan. If there are any questions, and so on that it can be addressed so that the way in procedure goes smoothly. You know? The way in team receives all way in documents through the competition secretary. Now, where to get them from? The competition secretary's first responsibility is to gather all the necessary documents collected and they are ready inside the appropriate folder or envelope. We have been using envelopes uh, in uh, Norway, a brown big envelope. And there is the number of the session so that you know, ah, this number, this session is mine to do the way in, okay? So by the session number, you know which envelope to pick up from. You know? The written session, uh, session next to the competition, IT manager, it's for the way in, okay? So you find it where the mother computer is in the competition hall, where the IT includes all the necessary details into the competition system, okay? It is usually somewhere around there where the speakers are, okay? So the documents are, the way in protocol sheet, which is the one in the middle that you see on the screen. The athletes card per session, which you can see on your right side below. And a key for the way in room. Always make sure, ask first if the way in room is locked, because at many competitions, we allow the way in to be used as pre-scale way in room when there is no official way in going on and so during the whole day actually the way in room the official way in room remains open unlocked okay so better ask if a key is necessary or not now when you get into the way in room the way in is conducted in a room equipped with the following items an official calibrated scale, which is situated in a privately screened area. Stationary kit supplies, usually on a table, red marker, black and blue pen. A calculator for the 80% IMWA kilo rule. You can use your phone for that. Most of you, you have a phone where you have a calculator on it. And then the sufficient number of table and chairs for the way in procedure. Okay, as, as we need uh, chairs outside of the way in where people, where the athletes can sit and wait until they, they are called up. You also need to have uh, chairs inside where the athlete can pull their clothes on instead on the floor, you know, and so on. I would like to explain to you what on the on the way in protocol sheet, what is a lot number, what is a start number, because many people are confused. So it goes like this. After the closing date of the athletes registration system, the computer system throws a big series of number 
onto the full registered list. And this is called the lot number. These numbers are electronically randomly given and the lot number will determine the actual start number of each athlete will receive one of these numbers to determine fairness towards all lifters without being able to give favor to a specific athlete. So if you look back, I go back now to the way in protocol sheet, the one, the big thing in the middle. Yeah, you see, you see the protocol sheet in the middle and it says start number one, two, three, and so on. And next to it, in the in the table you see lot and that means the lot number and the lot number is the random given number and it starts from the lowest to the highest so the lowest lot number will be start number one and then the next one going slowly higher by uh, next one higher and higher that is then start number two three and so on okay so if i hope that that makes sense to you Okay, wait a minute, where are we? Yeah. Uh, right. So the calling order of the weight in starts from the lowest lot number into the highest lot number in each body weight category per age group. And we have more body weight categories in an age group. So the, the start number always starts from one. Okay, the lot number will be lowest. If we have two age groups, Okay, age group, uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, 40 and 35. Then we have two times starting from the lowest lot number to the highest lot number, the start number. Yeah, are you with me? You understand the concept? No? Yeah. So in case an athlete has been called up during the weigh-in, but is not there yet, then you continue to call up based on the way in protocol sheet, the list. And when the athlete appears, that athlete has to wait until all the athletes have been weighed in. You know, it cannot come any time and then being pulled in the middle of it when other athletes are still on. The one who is missing the time of the calling goes, will be the last to call in. Okay. In general, and that is for the way in, but also when it comes to to clarify who is the lifter, who is the you know the, the lifter who wins, it goes with the lot number, which becomes the start number. The lower start number starts the first attempt. Therefore, the lot number brings fairness to all athletes. And the calling order is, when it comes to the competition, the weight of the barbell from the lightest weight first, of course, and then the number of the attempt, always the lowest number first, and then the sequence order of the previous attempt, that means the athlete who lifted earliest is first, will go first. And that is when we have lifters who, who have an attempt with the same weight. No? And then at the end, the start number of the athlete from the lowest first. Now, tips to simplify the weigh in for athletes and the weigh in time. When they are waiting outside the weigh in room, please let them know to get ready to take off most of the clothes, but of course not naked and it doesn't have to be an, in underwear, but at least to get ready, you know, uh, uh, um, the shoes may be off already, you know, not too many clothes on and so on. And by knowing the rules, the way in team can help newcomer athletes to answer also their questions. We have many newcomers coming in every year actually in every age group now, and some they come with questions because it's all new to them. Huh? So the more you know, and you are aware of all the, the, the competition and the technical rules, then the newcomers 
it will help you to feel more comfortable. Uh, Denise, the, yes. the, rule, the rule of uh, weighing with the singlet. I'm coming to this. I'm coming to this. 250 grams. Okay. okay. No, we don't have that. We don't ah. have that. Process weightlifting, we don't follow this. I'm coming to this. Okay. Thanks. So coming back again to the weigh in list, lowest lot number orders, the start number per body weight category, right? as it is signed in red very clearly. Yeah? And please, when you do the weigh in, follow this weigh in protocol sheet at the end when you have weighed in everybody. Because if there are athletes who maybe not turn up, then the start, the start number changes. Example, you see here number six, start number six does not appear. Okay, then the start number seven, eight, nine, and ten will change. We'll go to the six becomes, uh, number seven becomes six, number eight becomes seven, and so on. Therefore, make sure that you don't change, that you don't fill out this way in protocol sheet until you finish the way in. For all lifters, for the way in, they must provide a, a photographic ID and proof of age at the way in. We accept a passport or national ID card, but we also accept a driver's license card if there is a photograph of the athlete on it. Okay, an official driver's license card, which is very similar to a national ID card. No. The way in of each competition will begin two hours before the start of the session assigned that you are weighing in. And the way in lasts for one hour. That means 60 minutes. And now I come to the rule that Isabel already asked. We are continuing the old IWF rule, which is that the athletes may be weighed in either completely undressed or in undergarments, which means underwear. And what we call the articles of the athlete outfit, like costume, unitards, shorts, and t-shirts are not considered as undergarments. This is something that lifters cannot wear for their way in, okay? Athletes must not wear shoes or socks or any other footwear during the way in. Now, for the adaptive weightlifters, if we have an adaptive weightlifter with a prosthetic limb, it must be weighed with the prosthetic limb. The weight of the athlete while wearing the prosthesis is considered to be the athlete's complete body weight. And in general, athletes are entitled to wear jewelry, hair adornments, and religious headgear during the way in athletes must not wear any watches during the weigh-in. Okay, no watches during the weigh-in, no socks and no shoes. And if they want to wear, to, to, to have their underwear for weighing, that's fine. And if they want to be completely naked, that is fine too. And the reason why we have chosen this is because we have no, uh, we, ha we don't have assets under the age of 18. And we have we never had uh, um, any clashes when it comes to traditions, uh, or customs, or whatever, no? or religious. We never had any problems with this. How to fill out an athlete's card? What you have in front of you is a typical athlete's card, which can be used for uh, master's weightlifting as well as normal, as any other non-master's uh, event, okay? And then you need to start to fill it out like this. You have an example here. To fill out snatch by the weight to and the coach, that means if an athlete wants to come, the, he can take a coach with him to the way in the coach can, uh, can uh, um, decide the attempts and also sign. 
or the athlete directly in master's weightlifting. It doesn't have to be a coach. It can be the athlete or a coach. And it starts with the lot number. As you can see, numbers, uh, numbers uh, three has the lot number 159. Yeah? The start number, the full name and surname, the nation, date of birth. And here the date of birth, it is not necessary to have the actual date of birth, but we must have the, 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 the year of birth. And the simpler formula of, of uh, masters is calculating the year, not the exact date of birth. Okay, so even for the way in to check on the passport, you can check the year, you don't have to check the exact date of birth. Okay. Then the body weight category, then the weight in body weight. And then you are asking, what do you declare for the first snatch attempt? And in this case, it's 120. And the same applies for the clean and jerk. What is the first attempt for the clean and jerk? 145. And then you look, the entry total here is 280. Okay, so the lifter must have an entry total equal or higher than the qualifying totals of master's weightlifting, the one that we publish with the registration. Okay. And the 280 kilograms is allowed to start with 20% less, not 20 kilo like the IWF rule. We have 20%, which is much more than 20 kilos for the reason that athletes could be injured and or need to, to lose weight for whatever uh, ill conditions and so on, and can still have a way to compete. As long as it doesn't go below the qualifying total. Okay, so you calculate that. You see the 120 plus the 145 is 265 which is 15 kilos below the 280. So the, the, the lifter is in very good way to start the competition. Here is the 80% rule very well explained. And so at the registration, let's say Isabel registered for the 81 body weight category in her age group and she decides to go one body weight category down with the entry total that she has given she has already qualified she has the qualification to go one body weight category down it's not a problem her entry total covers that but if isabel decides to go one body weight kilo uh, body weight category up which means the 81 okay then we have to look if it matches with the qualifying total. And if it is above, no problem whatsoever. We'll do the changes you know, before the, the closing date of body weight changes, category changes, uh, no problem. Otherwise, we will contact her and tell her, look, you don't have enough with the qualifying total. You, so we advise you not to go up one body weight category. So Denise, can I ask, you don't have, let's say I want somebody, I, I don't, but let's say I wanted to move from the minus 76 to the minus 71 and yeah. I've done the qualifying standard, but when a minus 76, do I have to do a qual? I don't have to do a qualifying competition at no, minus 71. Yeah, fine. No, okay. Don't need to. So that's different. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's different. You know, yeah. we based up on the entry total. For whatever reason, you can be very stable, you know, and never had any competition with a higher body weight category or even a lower, but you end up for whatever reason there. So we need to give you the flexibility to participate there as long as you meet the qualifying total. That's Super. It. No, I understand. Yeah. Because I think those weight issues are kind of more problematic for older women as well. So that's, that's yeah, lovely. Thanks for clarifying that. Yes, not a problem. Yeah. 
Okay, do you have any other questions regarding the 80% rule here, which applies for men and women the same in master's weightlifting? Huh? We have no difference. Just reading. Yes. I'm reading. <laughs> So in your example, uh, it was 120 and 145, giving yes. 165. And the uh, the entry total 280. that had been 280, if it would have been 300. No problem. Because it's well, very 320 would be a problem because it's lower than 80%. Of the 320. I know, yes, yes, the entry total remains the same, but if the, the asset cannot go lower than the 20% of the entry total given. Okay. So okay. we have very you need fun. to calculate that. Yeah, you need to calculate that once the athlete in a way in says, My attempt in a snatch is this, and my attempt in a in a clean and jerk is this. You see, and then you see also the entry total, and you you calculate quick, you know, yeah. if it matches, yeah. okay, if it matches. In order to help yourself, before, you know, if you are on time in a weigh-in room, you can see the entry total of each athlete, and you can pre-calculate already what the 20% of each entry total is, and mm -hmm. you, you mark it on the side or on another sheet, separately once once uh, they declare the snatch and the clean and jerk you figure it out immediately mm -hmm. okay yeah. yeah okay okay and i come to this as well now the the master's body weight change rule that is since last year that an athlete cannot move up or down during the weigh in anymore to another body weight category. Okay. We have mm -hmm. now at the verification meeting or before the start of the world or continental masters championships, each national federation confirms the final entry list of their athletes, including name of the athlete age group and body weight category. And that is at the final, at the verification meeting that we have, or we call it technical meeting. And that is usually the evening before we start the competition, the championship. And, and now, there, yeah, in there, uh, any corrections or whatever can be made there. We we uh, uh, inform every national masters chair and also the athletes to what date an athlete can move up or down one body weight category of the one that they registered. And okay. we have for Rovaniemi, the 2nd of September. Midnight Central European time, the 2nd of September is the deadline where an athlete can ask for any body weight category changes. And as, you, as usual, an athlete at the actual weigh-in, an athlete can weigh as many times as required. For example, uh, I would be in the 81 category. I come to the weigh-in. I am at 81.2. I can yes. come back three times, four, four times, five times, as long as the one yes. hour is not over. Absolutely. Yes, I come to that as well. Yes, you have the right to come in and check as many times as you want, you know, until it fits or the time is finished. And if I'm still after one hour at 81.2, then you, you, you cannot uh, compete. I cannot compete. Thank you. Yeah. If an asset is too heavy, he or she cannot move to the next body weight category anymore huh? at the weigh in. But and if an athlete is said, too light, <laughs> yes, the same, the same principle. Cannot compete either, even if the light, no, if it is too light, yes. I mean, if the lifter can, and that's what what, what people do, um, of course, we have far less lifters who are too light than yeah. are too heavy huh? in a, <laughs> in a, at yeah. the weight. 
So for them, they can help themselves with head garments, what they are entitled to wear, jewelry that they are entitled to wear, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, drinking lots of water mm -hmm. to to try to fill up uh, the the scale. Yeah. 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 Right. So, as I said, uh, please be extra careful. No more body weight category changes during the weigh in possible. Then we come to the end of the weigh in, and then it need, the, the protocol sheet needs to be filled in. So, you see the empty space which is the body weight. And you read this up from the actual athlete's car that you have filled out during every way in. And during the way in, you are not showing the way the athlete's card. You don't have them open for any athlete to see from other lifters. Okay, you turn around the, the, the paper, and you don't let anybody see what an athlete, the previous athletes have declared or what mm -hmm. their body weight is. And once everybody has gone and you are alone with your colleague, you start to fill out the way in protocol sheet with everything that you have filled in in every athlete's car. And then to be sure, you make another check one of your, either you or your colleague uh, says the name uh, or gives the data and the other one checks what is written on, okay? Then after that, you see, uh, you, you check it out and you can see on the athlete's card, the start number is in red. Okay, that's why you have a red marker on your table. And with big, with a big number, you write a start number of each athlete. It's very important because it needs to stick out when we have in a warm up area on the chief marshal's table, when we see all these athlete cards, we can help coaches or athletes to find immediately their card and the correct ones by telling them your start number is number three, your start number is number five, and your athlete's card is the same number. You do not care, you do not take any other athlete's card, only the one with your number on. Okay, it's far more efficient for the chief marshal to ensure that no other card will be taken, and it is also easier for an athlete or a coach to fill the athletes, the attempt of each uh, athlete no? at the end. So once we finish the weigh-in, uh, after the end of the weigh-in, the competition secretary must return all the documents in the, the same assigned session envelope and to return it to the competition IT manager. Yeah, you go back with, with the envelope, with all the athletes' cards and the way in protocol sheet, and you put it, you place it back on the table of the IT mother competition. Yeah, so that the IT manager can pick it up whenever the time is there to fill the data into the competition system. As I said, the competition IT manager fills out the data into the competition system accordingly. And that is part number one, the competition secretary and the way in. Okay. And now I would like to continue uh, but before we continue, do you have any any other question? Anything you would like to add or to say? Yes, Alex. Um, so, and you also follow the, um, what is it, the chain of custody. So if there's not someone currently sitting at the mother computer, 
you need to stay there with the cards. You don't just leave no, them, right? No, you, have, you leave the envelope on, you leave the envelope where you found it. Okay. Even if there's no one sitting there though? Yes. Even if there's nobody sitting okay. there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Either there is a box there or on the table. In Norway, we had it, you know, at the European Masters Championship, the competition uh, computer, the main, the, the mother computer was on the table alone uh, next to the speakers uh, tables. Okay. And then we were able to leave the envelopes at the corner of, of this table. At okay. other you can see you find it in a box and you put it back in the box right there at the table. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Do you have any other questions for this? No, thank you. Project for now. Okay. Right. And now we continue. I will uh, share my screen again and we go to the referee. Right. It is, of course, of the utmost importance to make yourself familiar with all the IWF technical and competition rules, including the International, international Masters Weightlifting uh, Competition Rules, which we have about 10 that are different from the IWF. Okay. For the exams, for theoretical exams, in our exams questionnaire, we have them all built in. And you will be given the link of the rule book where these technical and competition rules of the masters, where they start, where they are all listed. So you don't have to go through all the rule book just to find where those technical and competition rules are. No? Uh, they start actually from page 15 and then you have the competition and technical rules you know but you will be you will be given this information so we come to this once you made yourself familiar the most important and then the basics are that we follow the iwf referee rules be on time at your assigned seat and ready for the technical officials presentation Okay, for the presentation, you need to be in the backside, that means in a warm up area. The technical controller is the one who is in charge to make sure that all the technical officials from that session will be gathered together and will be lined up accordingly. And it's always the center referee first. Okay, center referee first, side referee next, I don't know which one left or right, they will let you know, and then the remaining which come after you. Yeah? Be impartial and assertive to all lifters, regardless which nation, including your own. And we, of course, no police force. That means we need to be polite, helpful, and friendly. That means the way we want to be treated, we need to treat also anybody else. When the lifting starts, please make sure that you give the lifter all the time to become fully motionless. Do not help, you know, do, do not be in a hurry to judge. Okay. As soon as the lifter is fully motionless, then you press the button. In general, use common sense rather than chasing mistakes. Unfortunately, we have technical officials who are just waiting for mistakes to happen. Uh, or they are way too relaxed because thinking, oh, there is age, you know, it's too old, uh, and, and, and do the decisions based on that. And when it comes to older age groups, you must know that when older lifter do an incorrect and wrong technical lift and get away with this, they will continue to do it in a wrong technical way and they will definitely end up very injured. So it's okay to give a no lift when it is for you not weightlifting or when it is for you, you know, incorrect technique rather than giving a good lift and to, yeah, to support a wrong technical lift that, that 
an athlete is not aware of, regardless of age. Wear the correct uniform to be identified in your position. We find it very important to be seen as an authoritative uh, position. It is good for athletes and coaches and also for spectators to see and to know uh, these people are assigned to do that job and athletes, tourists, uh, organizers or medical, they are, that's something different. It is good to know that, that we all look more or less the same. You know? We continue to use the IWF, dark blue navy, uh, jacket, uh, trouser or a skirt, a white shirt, but we are not so strict when it comes to shoe wears. It doesn't have to be black shoes. We want you to wear comfortable shoes. Yeah, wear comfortable shoes. Okay, if it is pink, if your 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 shoes are pink or any other carré, you know maybe it doesn't really fit. <laughs> okay, um, but make sure that you wear always comfortable shoes. It is important for us. Better to than the look. You know, that you are more comfortable. When you are in your position and you are on duty, please do not use the phone or a tablet while you are on duty. You can do it before, you can do it after, but not when you are on duty. Okay, it makes we are on live streaming and it looks like you are not interested. You, you, you want to, you, you, you know, you want to spend your time differently. Huh? It gives a wrong impression. A center referee in our events can be an IWF, cut one or two technical official, or an IMWA level, we call it level one or two technical official. For the side referees, because we are still short, we are using, using national or IWF or IMWA category one or two technical officials. Yeah. So it's about filling to be able to fill up the positions accordingly. And we encourage people with our courses to get the knowledge so that we have fairness and, and, and good competition, a quality championship for the good of the athlete. And of course, for all, for all of us yeah, to have a good quality event. As I said in the very beginning, at all our events, a referee does not need to conduct a weigh-in of the session he or she referees. Yeah. The IMWA has introduced separate weigh-in teams. Now we have already now produced the sign-up sheet, the technical official sign-up sheet for Rovaniemi. And we, are giving, we have given it to Finland to fill up the Finnish organization, their technical officials. And by the end of this week, it will be returned to us and then we will publish it. So you are most welcome to sign up. If you just started, you know, if you are a, a, a volunteer and you want to be for the national position, then you can do weigh-ins, you can be an assistant of a chief marshal and so on. If you are national, you can be already a referee on the side referee, or you can be you can do an assistant for a chief marshal or so on, or even an assisted technical controller. And when you are level either either IMWA level one or two, or you are IWF cut two or one, you are open to participate at all the positions except jury. The jury is only for cut one or level one. Yeah. And it is not to get away from IWF, but it's an addition to the IWF. That is why we just combine it. Yeah. Now the center referee and also the side referees before you you uh, judge any, you referee any attempt, you also have another assignment there, another responsibility. 
Referees can help the loaders by checking if the barbell is correctly loaded on both sides huh? and is also placed in the middle of the competition platform. So keep your eyes open. Yeah? And if you see anything on the platform that shouldn't be there or something that is not correct, then please communicate with the loaders directly if you can, you know, if you have the eye contact or if it is impossible through the jury table, you let them know and they will make sure that loaders will be called up to take care of whatever you have found. And then in general, if the referee light system is broken during the lift, you use what is on your table and we call that the manual referee system. It is a white flag or a red flag or a white board or a red board. Okay, but it has a different way of using than when it is an electronic one. Okay, we we'll come to that now. The three referees must use the white or red flag respectively after, but only after the center referee gives an audible and visible down signal. Okay, when, it, when the electronic system is working, the, or the, the down signal, we can hear it normally. Okay, so when we can hear it, then the referees, then they can, they can you know, show their decision. If the electronic system is not working, you raise accordingly the flag or the board that you have decided, white or red. Yeah? But you do it only after there has been a down signal, either a verbal one from the center reverie or the down signal, the electronic one. When there is a lot of crowd, sometimes an athlete is not able to hear the down signal. And when you are center referee, you can see that the athlete is holding the barbell for too long. Then you automatically, you do a down signal, an audible and a visible down signal, loud and clear so that the athlete can hear this. Yeah, do not wait until the athlete thinks that it's time to let the barbell down or before the athlete gets injured. Yeah. When the athlete has been motionless and it doesn't release the barbell, you give a down signal, an audible and a visible one, a center referee. Okay. Now, before we continue here, I want to, I will stop this sharing. And I will go now to the, yeah, here it is. I want to share some videos with you that have been uh, produced by the IWF to what is a no lift. Okay, I want you to have a look. What is a no lift? Okay, here we go. Before I start, do you all see the screen with the YouTube. Yes. Do you yes. all see? Okay, good. So we can start. Have a look at here. Well, have a good look at this video. Well, she lifted the barbell, let it down, and then she grabbed the barbell again. And and that was a no lift. Why do you think it was a no lift? Because it had reached the, the knees. The knee, the yes, the knee. reached the high of the knees. So when the high of the knees is reached, the lifter cannot just release the barbell anymore. Then it is an incorrect and in, incomplete no lift. touching the platform with another part of the body than the feet. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> very strong and very good try, but it's a no lift. It's still trying. <laughs> Failing to fully extend the knees at the completion of the lift. You can see that here, they would show us the lift. So now you can see the knees are not extended. 
So it's incomplete. Touching the thighs or the knees with the elbow or the upper arms. That is, of course, a no -less. Sometimes it's difficult to see these ones. That is correct. And in, in master's weightlifting, we don't have video replay. Mm. Okay, we don't have video replay. And the video replay at IWF events uses for this, this wrong touch, um, the slow motion. Mm -hmm. Okay, the slow motion. But for any other wrong mistake, like bending, extending of elbows or whatever, the IWF used the, co the, the, the normal time zone and not the slow motion time mm -hmm. for the video replay. Okay. Okay, let's go to the second one. Pulling from the hand, there you see, stop the barbell right where the hip area starts. And that is, of course, a no lift. Dropping the barbell from above the shoulder. There you see. Now he will release the barbell without helping the barbell up to shoulder area. And that is a no lift. Failing to replace the complete barbell on the competition platform. Yeah, a good lift, but unfortunately the barbell went halfway outside of the competition platform. Resting or placing the barbell on the chest at an intermediate point before its final position, which we call a dirty or a double clean. Now you see the barbell went very low on the collar and then she placed it up. Any apparent effort to jerk which is not completed, including lowering the knees again, there he lowers the knees and does not do the job. And that is a no -lift. Okay, we go to the third one. Again, touching the platform when any other part of the body than the feet. She's very flexible. There you go. A very good lift, but unfortunately too flexible. The time is up when the time lapsed and the lifter actually did not appear for the lift on the platform. <clears throat> uh, one question, Denise. Yes. Some athletes, when they, before the jerk, and they have made the clean, they are ready to jerk, but they uh, they lift the barbell just to place their hands larger. Yes, they can close the grip of the barbell. They are entitled to. Okay, thank yes. you. You can do that, yeah. Releasing the barbell from an incomplete position. The athletes have to wait until the referees down the down signal comes. Finish too early. Touch the barbell with his or her footwear. Here you can see the IWF and, and IMW is following the same rule now. When an athlete comes to the platform and touches the barbell with the foot, then it becomes already a no lift. When the lifter touches the barbell with the foot where after a, a good lift, after the complete good lift, then that asset will be given a warning from the jury. But if the asset will do it again, you know, maybe out of, that's what the lifter always does in training, then that will be the good lift will become a no lift. Okay. So this is an 
bending extending of elbows or one elbow. Like this one is a very slow motion jerk. What a shame, eh? so much effort and then just one simple extending bending changes everything, makes it to a no lift. Go to the next one. Now this is going outside of the platform and then walking back in. <laughs> yeah, that's a new rule. <laughs> now not facing the center referee at the beginning of the lift of the attempt. During the lift and in their final motionless position, the asset is permitted to not be facing the referees. Like in this case, it is a good lift. And here, here I want to say, if, if that happens, the referee and every jury member has the right to stand up, to get up, to, to leave the position, to just to ensure that he or she can see if the lift is correct or not. Mm -hmm. It is the right of every referee or jury member to get up to make sure that they can actually uh, follow the lift that is in front of them. A deliberate oscillation of the barbell is to gain advantage. And that's a no lift. Sometimes it's difficult to judge. Huh? Yes, that it's you have to separate when an athlete is motionless and the barbell is moving because of the weight. This is a normal thing for the barbell. Mm -hmm. But if the lifter is moving, then that makes all the change and that makes all the difference. You can understand the difference. Yeah, so always make sure that you understand the difference between a barbell it's normal to move because of the weight, because of the movement and then the weight. And there is a difference when the asset is moving as well. Mm -hmm. oh, we had this already, sorry. We'll go to the next one. We have this sometimes, you know, that lifters do technically a very good lift, but they are actually running, oops, running behind themselves and they end up at the edge of the competition platform. As long as their feet or one foot or a toe, let's put it that way, does not touch the outside area of the platform, <laughs> but remains in the air, like we saw here, it is a good list. Of course, as long as the, the barbell falls back on the competition platform. Yeah. Then it is a good lift. So that was a good lift. Because the toes were the toes didn't touch outside of the platform. Exactly. They just exactly. hung off the edge. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So the barbell needs to get back to the platform and also the the, the lifters, toes or any food cannot touch the outside of the competition platform, then it is a good lift. Be extended at the completion of the lift. Now watch this one here. Very interesting.
Look, it didn't touch her with the feet. Didn't touch. So is it a good lift or no lift? It's a good lift. So far, so good. But look here. Look again. <laughs> look at the elbow. Oh. We're too busy looking at the knees. Yes. <laughs> he is full drama. Look at him. A little bit of everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, easy to miss. Oh. I mean, trying so hard, and and and, <laughs> but yes, yeah, he had one elbow extended and bended, so that gave him unfortunately a no lift. Here we have again the one is not touching, the other one is touching. Very difficult for referees and jury to actually see that. Yeah, that's easier. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Whenever you see a mistake, then you need to press the button. But if the electronic system is not working and you have the, 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 the flux or a cardboard to, to show the position, you, you cannot show. The mm -hmm. center referee cannot show because you might be wrong. So in this case, only the side referees can show. And if the two side referees show, then the center referee can show. It's actually, actually a little bit opposite of when the electronic system works. Okay, because the center referee, when you show the car, but you could be wrong, you have taken the possibility of a good lift away. The side referees are not standing in the way based on the IWF rules. Okay, and that is when you when you are showing manually. Electronically is not a problem. So, but when we show an, a mistake and we are with the flags, we yes. are side referees. We do not have to respect the rule to wait until the center referee says down. We have to to show the red flag immediately. Yes. That's what you're exactly. saying. Exactly, yes. Because when the electronic system works, the electronic yeah. system uh, let the down signal uh, call up only by two decisions. It doesn't have to be the third decision that the down mm -hmm. signal and the referee system works. Okay? okay, but in this case, when the electronic system works and two referees see an, uh, a mistake, then it doesn't matter who pushes the button. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because the lifter is not, doesn't have any, any obstacle in front of him that mm -hmm. might prevent him or might shock him and say, he, he just drops the barbell. Okay? okay. But when it is on manual, only the side referees are entitled to show already their decision. Okay. Okay. This one here, what you just saw, is the right. lifter has not become motionless, and also the trunk is, is, is moving into a different direction than the feet. A motionless uh, lift means when the trunk and the feet are in the same line. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it is not a motionless one. That means the lifter continues to move. 
okay? And in her case, she even dropped the bottle. Okay, we've seen this one here. And they're very flexible athletes. Mm -hmm. And look at she is. These things we have seen. So we have come to the end of our incorrect lifts, those videos. So now I'm I'm uh, Going back. One one question, Denise. Um, you have athletes showing that they can they cannot stand the elbows. Yes. We what have is the trick to recognize this is a good lift, even though they are like this? <laughs> or is it trying to play with the rules? Okay. Some they will, some they will. But you know what the IWF uh, says is um, by the physique, by, by the athlete's nature, not to have the elbows extended is mm -hmm. when they are practically round. If you look, for instance, at Biros Dimas lifts all of them, the arms, they are, it's round. They are always round. Okay, mm -hmm. and these athletes, or if they had an injury and the elbow, one elbow sticks a bit more out than the other one, they have to show that by every lift, each lift, not just in the beginning and then finish. If they haven't showed it at each lift, you can give a no lift. Okay. Okay, then give a no lift. The asset has to know the rule that if the elbows are not straight, then he has to show each side. If the asset has a problem with one elbow, then the asset has to show at each attempt, that means six times, to that elbow in the, uh, towards the, the, the referees and the juries on the competition platform. Uh, what are the, the allowed single for the World Championship Masters? Is, is there a rule regarding the the publicity that the, the the signs that can be on there no or... you can have any publicity on your on your uh, okay yeah no problem whatsoever but, but not on the uh, unitard yes yeah. you can have on your unitards right. um, from your sponsor whatever as long as there is no offensive or political statements Okay, so they can have logos on the unitard as well? Any logo you want, as long as it is not political, not religious, as such, you know, yeah. But okay. Denise, not on the unitard. Yes. Doesn't the unitard, isn't the rule that the unitard must be solid color, plain with no patterns? The yeah, unitard are not the same. That, that is something else. They are talking about when you have a sponsor, or from your federation, the logo of your federation, you can have this on your on your unitar. Of course you can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you will see a lot of Germans have that. You know, they have uh, their sponsors, uh, beer or cars or whatever, and they have the logo on their unitar. Yes, of course. You can have that. Okay. Yeah. That's a change because two That's years... That's a change, yeah. So you have to put it in the, in the reverse way because there was Adidas shown on it. Which, which well, was but not, but not, not on our events. I'm talking about our events. I'm not talking about the either European, European Championship, Masters Championship. It was the World Masters Championship. You can wear the unitard as long as if the colors are correct. But uh, sponsors or you can wear anything you want. Your name, yeah, not a problem. Of course. That's fine. If whoever yeah. says otherwise is wrong because we actually we don't have a rule saying you cannot. We don't have a rule saying you cannot. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in 
the International M M Weightlifting Federation, the unitard must be completely plain with yes. no pattern and no anything else. Whereas yes. you can wear any sort of tights if you, underneath your singlet then for masters. Actually, well, actually, um, it's continental championships, not masters, continental championships. You have an amount of space that you can use for your sponsors. You are allowed that on your unitard, on your on your singlet. Okay, but I think we were talking about the unitard. This is where the confusion is: the unitard versus the singlet. Oh, okay. So no, the yeah, okay. The unitard yeah. is a one piece, a long thing that is usually one color. No, that's different. Yes. Yeah, fine. That's okay. what Isabel was that's asking. That's what we were asking. I'm yeah. Talking, sorry, I'm talking about the singlet. The singlet, the singlet, the you can. singlet, not the unitard. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, the singlet. That's fine. Like we all have stuff on our on our singlet. Exactly, exactly. But the unitard, the unitard is the same. Nothing. One color. Yes, yes. Yeah. No logos. No logos. Nothing. Okay. That's fine. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. And we we realize that by unitards, if the backdrop is dark colored then the unitards, when they are dark, is a problem. We don't see whether the, the knees are uh, bending, extending, you know, if they are extended, if the elbows are actually extending, and then, you know. <laughs> it's very difficult to see when the backdrop is bluish, dark color as well. <clears throat> so that is a big disadvantage when it comes to, and more and more athletes, are wearing what we call unitards. I mean, uh, uh, a long sleeve or a long leg, you know, yeah, yeah. It's not easy. And it has to be one and the same color. Uh, you cannot wear a red long sleeve on top and then a dark blue at the bottom or the other way around. That has to be the same color. Okay. Right, I share my screen again and we continue now with the referee. We already had this in uh, one of the videos. The high of the knees. The clock will stop as soon as the barbell is lifted from the platform. And the referees must count as no lift, an unfinished attempt in which the barbell has reached the high of the knee. Okay, so if the lifter stops at the high of the knees and puts the barbell back on the platform, it's an incomplete no lift. Okay. Now, if there is a, in the other way around, if the lifter starts to lift the barbell up, but then put it back on the platform, then the timekeeper who has to stop the clock as soon as the barbell is lifted from the platform, the timekeeper must start the clock again. And it's usually there where it stopped, it, so it can continue to run down. There are many lifters who are somehow disoriented and leave the platform. Some of them, they just need another second or two and then they grab the barbell again and do a lift, whether that is a good or no lift. Right. But as soon, as long as the barbell has not reached the high of the, the need, the, the, the level of the knees, then they are entitled to grab the barbell again and do their lift. And the timekeeper must address accordingly. We already said that before we're touching the barbell with his, his or her footwear, there will be a no lift if the lifter touches the barbell before the start of his attempt. And if the barbell is touched with his foot after a successful attempt, he will be giving a warning. And if he does it again by a good lift, then that lift will be taken away and it will become a no lift. We had this as, as well in one of our videos. All three referees must give the lifter the full time to become motionless 
And as long as the asset moves and has not made a technical mistake, please wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Maybe the lifter rotates and has a way and strength to rotate back. Whatever, you need to give the lifter the time to become motionless. When can a referee reverse a decision? The referee can reverse the decision, number one, after the down signal and the lift, the, the referee decided for a good lift, but then the lifter drops the barbell rather than helping the barbell to get back on the competition platform from shoulder, from shoulder level. Yeah, when the lifter just drops the barbell, you can reverse the decision to a no lift. Or you raise appropriate the flag. You, know, you have three seconds in the electronic system. It's three seconds. You can change also when the lifter has failed to bring the barbell back in front of him on the competition platform. That means if the barbell has fallen on back, on his back, back on the platform, then this is also a no lift. You know? Mm -hmm. And when the lifter has, has released the barbell correctly, but the barbell is falling one or on both sides of the competition platform first. There is no problem when the barbell has fallen on the competition platform and then rolls off or jumps off on the podium. That's still a good lift if there has been no technical problems in the, in the attempt. Uh, but if one part has been outside of the competition platform, it becomes a no lift. And you reverse the decision by either pressing the button within the first three seconds, or you turn to the jury and you show your flag. When we finish our championship or the session, then we kindly ask the referees not to run off immediately if it, if it is to go to the toilet, please do so. While the competition IT manager is producing the results of this session so that the medal ceremony can be conducted. We need the referees usually to conduct the medal ceremony. And once an age group has finished, we also give the best lifter per age group award after the medal ceremony of that session. Yeah. So help out in there as well, and then you are released. And that's it. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Do you have any questions regarding referees? No. You can do now or you can still contact us. And I also would like to tell you that today we had uh, the competition secretary weigh in and the referees. And on Wednesday, I have at the same time, again, at 11 a.m. and at 5 p.m. Cyprus time. Yeah. And it will be the position of chief marshal and the position of technical controller and athlete outfit requirements. The Zoom, the, the, the Zoom uh, invitation has been published. The way you found today uh, this invitation, you have for Wednesday as well. And I'm going to send it out as well again. Uh, please sign up to our uh, technical official registration system so that we can get hold of you, contact you. You will be given all the material that we use for this, this week's seminars. And whenever you decide to sit the theoretical exams, um, uh, uh, drop us an email or on any social media that we have contact and we will send you the link again so that you have access to the theoretical exams. And as soon as you finish them, then uh, you will be given the results. And if you have no other questions or anything you would like to add, then I wish you a great, for the USA, a great day. You are starting off for a good day.
to us a great afternoon and a great evening for us thank in you. the Mediterranean, like Isabel and me. And thank you so thank much. Thank you very much, Liz. Thank you very much. That was great. All the best. And uh, thank you again for everything. Denise, the theoretical exams you're speaking about, is it for national referees as well? It's all, to be for all the same. It's for everybody the same. Okay. Okay, it's for everybody the same. It's We have actually 62 questions, of which 10 of them are the master's competition and technical rules, and all the others is IWF. Okay. Okay? Okay. Thank you. See you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.